All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you all so much for joining us for uh, our 14th, our 14th webinar. It's um, kind of amazing that this is, um, you know, 14, 14 months ago, we started doing these. Um, and, um, and, and here we are. It is January of 2023. Um, so, quick run through the agenda. We're going to do our usual welcomes, talk about who's going to be joining us on the call. Um, we're going to discuss uh, what, what this is about, body and DHCD, um, and obviously bright speed. Um, we're going to talk about the completion of the project because that's fast approaching. Um, and then we're going to talk about the project areas, um, so where we are in construction. Um, and then we're going to have uh, the team from bright speed go over uh, the ordering process and the installation process. We're going to try to touch on um, a lot of the questions that people have about ordering um, and installations uh, during the the process, but um, but just know that if if we haven't answered your question, um, go ahead and ask it now, um, and then we can we can touch on it when we get to the Q and A portion. Um, speaking of which, Q and A. Um, so throughout today's webinar, you can use the Q and A function of Zoom to ask questions. Um, after our presentation, we will open up to a question and answer period. Um, if you don't know how to get to the Q and A. Shake your mouse, um, look for that little bar, and there's going to be a Q&A button in that bar that currently has three, three questions already on it. So feel free at any point in time to click on that. Um, and what are we talking about? Um, today we're talking about the Virginia Telecommunications Initiative 2021 project um, uh, in partnership, a partnership between uh, the Almoral Broadband Authority, Brightspeed, formerly CenturyLink, um, and uh, the Department of Housing and Community Development. Um, this is a, a project that um, was originally scoped in 2020, um, and and I'm sorry, in, in uh, early 2021, uh, and which um, had to go through a lot of changes before um, construction actually happened. Uh, and we'll talk about a little bit more about that. Um, but uh, it's a long time coming, um, and the uh, the state has committed $2.3 million towards this project. Um, I can tell you uh, Brightspeed has put up uh, their $2 million. Um, the county has about $600,000 um, uh, that's going to be go towards this project. Um, and, and the project itself is 10 different project areas um, with about 1,600 new passings. And passings is kind of an odd, odd way of saying 1,600 places that are going to be able to receive uh, fiber service because of this project. Our office, we serve as the public liaison for this project, um, bringing resident concerns to Brightspeed, uh, to the Broadband Authority, and to DHCD. Um, if you ever have any questions or concerns um, about this project, you should reach out to us. Uh, you're going to hear me say it a lot, B-A-A-O at almarl.org. Um, and, and I want to point out, um, we're not just an intermediary. Our, our role is more than just uh, you know, passing the word along. Um, it is working with our residents and working with our partners um, to make sure everybody's got a, a satisfying resolution. Um, and, and with that, I, I kind of, before we talk about the completion of the project, um, I kind of want to run through a quick timeline of this project because um, there's a lot of challenges that we faced. Um, there's a lot of good that's come out of this project. Um, so I wanted to start um, all the way at the beginning um, with uh, the start of the pandemic. Um, so the pandemic obviously um, was uh, was a really challenging time for everybody. Um, but it was also uh, in 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 a lot of ways, it was the culmination of a lot of work. Uh, because a lot of people recognize some very important things. One of the things that they recognized is the importance, obviously, of broadband service. Uh, when everybody all of a sudden had to be at home, everybody knew exactly how bad things were. So um, in, in 2020, um, we, we did not yet know uh, what the landscape was going to look like for body projects, um, but we had a pretty good idea of what parts of the county weren't served. Um, and the Broadband Authority uh, put out an RFP and, and applied for a grant um, to be awarded for work to be done in 2021. Um, and that's what this project is, is the VADI 2021 project. Um, when that uh, project was awarded, it was actually a lot bigger than it is now. Um, and that's actually one of the first challenges that this project faced. Uh, because as you went into uh, 2021, the federal government 
independently of what the state wanted to do, um, actually placed a, another set of awards uh, for grant funded projects in the county. Um, and those projects overlapped uh, the original body 2021 project. And so one of the first things right out of the gate, this project got sidelined because it had to be re-scoped. All of a sudden, all the partners had to sit back down at the table and say, okay, we, we, we were going to do it this big, but now we have to carve out this section. We have to carve out those sections. We have to figure out um, how much is it going to cost now, now that we've changed the scope of it, um, how much is it, how much is it actually going to cost, get all the contracts set up. Um, and the result is that Construction didn't start until the fall of 2021, where generally, uh, you know, this is construction. This is real construction work. You know, the, ideally, you want to be, you want to start building in the spring. So that way you've got as much time to build before weather starts to become a factor. Um, so this project, it didn't start until the fall of 21. And then um, a lot of the typical construction challenges started to come up. Um, including running into rock while you're trying to drill along a right of way. Um, and, and the reason I bring that up is with a construction project where you're just building a road or you're building um, a, a house and you hit a rock, um, you know, there, there might be solutions for just moving things a little to the left, a little to the right uh, to try to accommodate that obstruction. Um, when you're talking about rights of way where the, 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 the provider has a specific permission to go along a certain path. Um, it's a lot harder to then just say well, like, well, we ran into a rock. So we're gonna have to go a little to the left or a little to the right, a little bit further from the road, a little bit closer from the road, um, especially because that rock might be there too. Um, and so from the beginning, we actually had uh, construction delays that got in the way of, of uh, meeting some of the deadlines. Um, and then we also had uh, pandemic related delays. Um, so as we went into, 20, into 2022, there were issues related to material shortages. There were issues related to staffing shortages. Um, and then not uh, uh, to, 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 to be tough, to throw an elbow, um, but one of the other challenges that we faced was that there was at that point a transfer of assets going on. Uh, Lumen, uh, the, the parent company of CenturyLink was trying to sell and was in the process of selling um, the, 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 the assets that they owned in this area. Um, and we have seen during the, the, this latter portion of this project, the ways that even though that sale happened a few months ago, there are still issues related to um, your accounts and related to the way that, that certain IT systems were set up that the transition hasn't been perfect. Um, and, and then lastly, um, there were issues with communication. Um, and we all saw that in the letter of finding that we discussed and that if, if, if you're new to these calls because you hadn't heard about it, um, that, that's kind of what we're talking about. Um, you know, when you've got a partner where um, there's, there's work to be done, um, but there's also a lot of work to be done on their part to try to get ready for, what, for, for what's about to change, um, sometimes you don't get as much communication out as you want to. Um, and so if you're on this call for the first time, uh, if you had not heard about this project until somebody sent you an email and said, hey, you're in this project, you should you should get on this call. Um, I just want to say, you know, thank you uh, to whoever let you know. Um, we, you know, have been uh, have been hosting these webinars. We've been advertising. We've been in the press. We've been in the, in the TV news. Um, and so uh, we've tried our best to make sure that everybody's aware. And we've made that call to people on this webinar in the past that if you know anybody um, who lives near you, who might be a part of this project, have them reach out to us, baao at almarl.org. I'm going I'm to make that call again. Do that. If you have somebody who, who you think might be on this call, go ahead, give them our uh, email address, have them reach out to us. And that way, um, if they're in, we can catch them up and we can give them the information that they need. Um, and that brings us to, uh, to our next topic, the completion. Um, so following uh, the extension, uh, of the project, which was originally supposed to end in December. Um, and remember, we kicked it off with that very long delay before construction could ever even be started. Um, following the, the extension that was received in October, um, this project, uh, and when we talk about the project, we're talking about the construction portion of the project. Um, construction operations have to be completed by March 31st of 2023. That's coming up. Um, so installations, are going to continue beyond that date, and I want to I want to get ahead of that. So when we talk about an end to the project, that doesn't mean that, there, that that's an end point of being able to be involved in the project. Um, 
our job over the coming weeks is to work with Brightspeed to make sure that they have everything they need to finish this project off um, on time. But if, if you haven't put your order in uh, by March 31st, you'll still be able to, to get service. That's not an issue you need to worry about. And if you haven't gotten your service yet, you put your order in and you haven't gotten your service yet, that doesn't mean that everything stops on March 31st. It means that construction operations, um, and we can talk more about what that means, what aspect of it is construction operations, that ends on March 31st. Um, we are going to start to shift our website. Um, right now, we've spent a lot of our website space on construction updates, on letting you know, hey, here are the things that are going on. This is where construction is happening. We're gonna shift that hard to just cover the ordering and installation process. And the reason is that that's gonna become the much more relevant piece in the coming weeks, because once you've got construction just about wrapped up, we don't need to let people know. Um, you know, We don't need to let people know, well, it's gonna be in February, it's gonna be in a couple of weeks, it's gonna to be tomorrow. Um, all we need to focus on is making sure that everybody has uh, the information that they need about this project to order service and to get uh, to, to know what their experience is going to be when uh, service is getting installed. So um, so that was um, our quick rundown of uh, the history of this project and the upcoming end of, of the construction portion of this project. Um, speaking of the construction portion, um, we've got some updates. Um, Murray Lane, uh, and I'm actually going to throw this over to, to Rich now. Rich Shulman has joined us from uh, Brightspeed. We've also got Nancy Devine. Rich is the Virginia Governmental Affairs Director, and Nancy is uh, Director of Marketing. And and uh, so I'm going to throw it over to Rich. Um, Murray Lane has been a challenge. If you live, if you're on the call and you live on Murray Lane, or you, you live uh, in, in a Broad Axe Road, you know um, these are narrow roads where it's hard to get certain construction equipment in there. Um, so a lot of what you've probably seen is crews actually with pickaxes and shovels and wheelbarrows doing um, really hard work to get the area dug out, lay the conduit, and then get the fiber in. Um, and so there has been a delay. The other areas of the Taylor's Gap um, uh, project area have launched, but we're still waiting on Murray Lane. Rich, do we have any updates on that one? No, in fact, there's they're still doing some, some. so there's, you know, again, there's two pieces, there's construction and there's install. We're still working on construction. Uh, I was actually out there and saw that we still have some work that's going on uh, on um, Dickwich Road right there that's still tying things in. So yeah, it, it has bogged us down in there. And if, if you live along those roads, those couple of roads there, you know exactly what I'm talking about, just how, how, uh, how hard it was, was to get. And again, that's all construction. That's all stuff that's going in ahead of time to then be able to connect up the customers. Those aren't individual drops that are taking so long. That's yep. the whole fiber backbone. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's where we are on Murray Lane. Um, the commitment that we've had from the beginning is, uh, well, since we recently changed things, um, you know, we'll let you know if it's this month. <laughs> um, so that's that's your update. It's, it's, it's probably not going to be this month. If there's a change, if the weather stays nice and everybody and the work goes really well, we will let everybody know. Um, in Stony Point, um, and, and this is where I'm going to start talking about um, the successes. Uh, so this project has had a lot of successes. It's been a little bit harder to see. Um, and, and if you're if you've been one of those people that I, I've been emailing, and then you emailed me this time and you said you can stop, uh, you can stop emailing me because my service is connected and everything's going great. Um, we appreciate the, those success stories whenever we can get them. Um, in Stony Point, um, we've been genuinely blown away by the speed with which uh, Brightspeed's uh, contractors have been working. Um, in, in in genuinely a, a surprisingly quick time frame, they were able to start construction in all three of the project areas. And this is a project that starts um, just about at the southern end of Stony Point Road, just <laughs> not too far from where I am right now, um, and makes it all the way to the county line. So this is a big project, um, and they've been they've been doing construction work. Um, you guys have seen them out there. Um, if you have any issues with the work that you're seeing done, please reach out to us. Um, but there was a hangup, and that's that they're waiting for a trunk line. Um, so that trunk line, this is not just uh, the, the thinner tubing that's just carrying enough to serve the houses on your street. This is actually the big pipe that's coming all the way from, uh, from another bigger pipe uh, that's going to actually provide the service for all of those smaller strands. Um, that's coming from Polar Grounds Road. Um, and again, similar to, to the speed with which they've been working on Sony Point Road, we've been blown away by the number of challenges that Rich and his team have been able to overcome 
on Polar Grounds Road to get this delivered, including some complicated rail crossings, which if you've ever done construction, you know the worst thing in the world is to have to build near a rail line because it's a whole new set of rules. Um, and, and then the other great news is that work has become, begun along Campbell and Cobham. So the two Keswick areas that we're working in, um, work has actually started, which is, uh, again, it's, it's a great sign that we are well on our way to completing the construction phase of this project. Um, we will continue to provide guidance when areas are under construction, which uh, this is it. This is, we are now announcing everybody is under construction um, and we will provide updates when we're nearing construction end. Um, construction operations um, don't end because you stop seeing crews uh, in your neighborhood. Um, one, the whole area has to be lit up all at once. So we've talked about the tranches and we'll cover that again in a minute, but your entire tranche is gonna get lit up all at once. So they might have left your neighborhood a few weeks ago, but they still might be digging in a different uh, neighborhood. And once they're done with all of them, they still have to go back and do a verification where they are literally, they've got everything lit up and they're just going piece by piece, segment by segment to make sure the fiber is working, all of the facilities they installed are working. Um, so that way, when they actually start providing service, everybody's service, everybody's getting the service that they're supposed to get. Um, so, uh, you won't hear from us about, um, about ordering until all of that is done, both the construction, the verification, and then if anything's broken, they're gonna need to get it fixed before they can start play, before they can start taking orders for your area. Um, and, and the way that you're gonna know about it is that email list. So again, if you know anybody in your neighborhood, the easiest way for them to find out that they can place orders and that they can uh, get this service is by, getting on our list so that way we can email you the day that you can place orders and by the time by the time you i've emailed you we've actually taken the time to pull up the the brightspeed ordering website and to put it through its paces with a lot of your addresses to make sure that there aren't any hiccups so um so so get you know share this share this uh share my email with others and that way we can get people signed up um the Stony Point and Keswick tranches. So that's, we've got large project areas. We break them into chunks. They're gonna get lit up in those chunks. Those have been released. Um, so in Stony Point, it's Eastham, uh, then Stony Point, which is there where they're talking about the school, and uh, then Bell Store, which we all know um, as a little bit different this time, uh, but it used to be Bell Store. And so they're still calling it Bell Store. And then in Keswick, it is Sismont Campbell, and then the Cobham. So it's just the two roads, the two uh, uh, avenues, the two corridors down there. Um, and those are going to get lit up together. Um, there is a street list now available for Stony Point. Uh, we're going to share that later this month. And the reason that we're that we're going to do that is we're just going to spend some time looking at that street list, making sure it makes sense, um, and then providing it uh, via email to a link on our website. So we're going to upload it to the website. It's not going to be publicly available. In general, we like to, to try to limit the amount that we just throw people's addresses out there, um, but it'll be on our website, not publicized, and then you'll get a link so that you can download your tranche that you believe you're in, check to make sure that's the tranche that you're in, and if there's any confusion, you can reach out to us and we can talk about it. Uh, at, of course, BAAO at Um and, and before we move on to... Um, so the marketing conversation to the conversation with uh, with Brightspeed, I wanted to, um, and here I'm going to go ahead and and jump jump the gun to um, to a couple of the questions. Um, here we've got uh, questions related to um, the people who have placed orders um, and and are and are waiting for something. Um, and, and Mr. Hogan's question kind of breaks it down with a uh, my my breakdown of the different people that are waiting uh, is a little bit different. So there are, there are basically four categories of, of, of people. Uh, the first category, um, your line is buried, your fiber is in, and everything's hunky-dory. And you want me to <laughs> you want me to stop emailing you. And that's, that's great. Um, so th that's one category. The second category are people that are pretty fortunate uh, because they were in a position where they could receive a temporary line. And you guys are gonna hear more about that in a minute. Uh, but they could get a temporary line that was running above ground um, and and they're waiting for their line to be buried. Um, then there's a, a, another bucket that's a little less fortunate uh, because they couldn't get a temp line. Um, either something needed to be bored under or uh, something needed to be moved. There's some sort of complication uh, that resulted in, in not being able to get a, a temporary line. Um, 
and, and for those, now they're just waiting for a burial, but they're also waiting to get service. So in that first group, they've got service. They're just waiting for their line to be buried in that, in that second group. Um, they're waiting for service and they need to get a, bear, a line buried before they're going to get service. Um, but there is one more category, um, and that's kind of the miscellaneous bucket. Um, and those are residents where there is some complicating factor that is kind of above and beyond all of these other ones. Um, and, and I don't know if, if any of them are on the line right now, but there is one gentleman who's waiting because his address isn't actually in one of the neighborhoods that we were serving, but his address was so close that it was going to be included. Uh, and everybody expected it to be included. Uh, but then when it came time to order, uh, there, there was a mix up and the marketing team didn't include his address. And so it's taken a lot of work and hopefully um, he's going to be able to place his order today. And, and that, that, that comes from uh, the attention of uh, Rich and Terrence from Brightspeed. It comes from the attention of a lot of teams out there that are, that are just working through figuring out what the problem is and then finding a solution for it. Um, and that's also true for some of our residents who had a really complicated uh, terrain issue. There were just things that needed to be overcome in order to figure out how they were actually gonna bring that service to their door. Um, and, and again, our super, you know, uh, supervisors from, uh, from Brightspeed met with the, the residents and, and worked out solutions for getting the fiber to their door. Um, even if you have an incredibly long drop and there's gonna be a really complicated path that needs to be taken, all those things um, are things that we're, being, that we're working through. And so, so I bring all those up to say one, um, whatever the issue is, um, there's a team of people um, here at the county um, and at Brightspeed that are dedicated to finding solutions for getting these things, the, these issues addressed. Um, because ultimately, everybody's on the same side of wanting these addresses to get connected. Um, for those of you that are waiting for a burial, if you have a temp line, um, it's important to note, uh, those temp lines are pretty resilient. Um, they're not just a thin little piece of, of, of uh, glass that doesn't have any protection. Um, the, the, the band that you've got out there is meant to protect uh, that inner core that has the fiber. So, um, so we understand worries about having it damaged. Um, that is absolutely our concern as well, as we don't want these temporary lines to start getting uh, uh, broken or degrading. Um, so we're keeping up with it and we're paying attention to it. Um, and for the, the residents that are waiting for their installation, um, they're waiting to have their line board and that way they can have it in, have uh, service installed. Um, that is absolutely something that we're um, keeping an eye on um, and, and that Brightspeed is committed to completing. Um, what's going to happen um, is that as much as possible, as Brightspeed increases the capacity uh, to do this work, is they're going to try to batch it. Um, so instead of having crews run out uh, to Rosemont and then run out to Advanced Mills and then run over to Tillman and run over to Jones Mill, um, they're going to try to have these batched together. And so what you're going to see, hopefully in the near term, is a lot of uh, work that will happen all at once in your area and get a bunch of people's issues fixed. And then they're going to go and they're going to work somewhere else for a while. Um, we want to make sure that the communication part is there so that you feel comfortable that you have some idea of where you stand in the process. And so if at any point in time um, you've you've reached out to Brightspeed and, and you're not at, you're at your wit's end and you haven't heard from them and you don't know what your what your status is, don't hesitate to email us, BAO at albemarle.org. Um, and and we're going to work together to resolve this. Now the resolution might be that we we check in with Brightspeed. We know that you're on on the list. That your that your issue is being tracked, um, and then we just have to tell you, you know, uh, be patient. They're going to get to you guys. Uh, but that's kind of the message that we want to that we want to let everybody know is, um, e even if and, and especially with that March thirty first date, even if that March thirty first date is coming, that doesn't mean you've been forgotten. Brightspeed is committed to getting you served. Um, so with that, um, I am now going to clear that and reintroduce Rich and Nancy from Brightspeed and get you guys on to your slides. Thanks so much, uh, Jason. So um, I know a lot of you are joining for the first time. We probably have some folks that have been on these calls before, but I always like to at least just give you a little bit of introduction as to uh, who I am and what my involvement is. Um, I just joined Brightspeed in October, but I've actually been in the telecom business for uh, 25 years. 
and I've worked on these grant programs since they were begun. I actually worked on a lot of the initial DSL projects 10, 15 years ago as well. Uh, I work with uh, Mike and I remember the days we worked on the very first VADI applications uh, for, for Albemarle County back when it was just he and I kind of putting all of these things um, together. But when Brightspeed took over, um, they, they one of the commitments that they made was to have somebody that's located here in Virginia, not somebody in North Carolina or Pennsylvania, who would be responsible just for Virginia. And so uh, um, they, they called me back. I was retired for a couple of years. They called me back and, uh, uh, you know, I worked in Virginia a lot of years and was glad to come back and do that. If, uh, but the promise that I made them give to me was I only have Virginia. I used to have 12 states I was responsible for. I wanted only responsibility for Virginia so I could focus on working with the local and state government here. And that's um, that's what I've been doing. Um, so one of my major areas that I am looking at as we work, and you know, I talk with uh, Jason and Mike numerous times throughout the day, uh, is to try to find some of those common areas where we've got issues that I think we can come up with solutions to make things work more smoothly, smoothly for you all. So that's one of the things I'm trying to do as I'm, as I'm getting to, you know, as I see the complaints come through and, and then try and work better on uh, communications with you all so that you understand what the, what the process looks like. Uh, these webinars do a tremendous job of that. So I'm gonna talk, Jason covered this, so I'm just, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but to talk about construction and the installation uh, process. Nancy's gonna talk through uh, some of the ordering process. And then um, as I see a lot of questions come up uh, or a lot of um, emails come in, I see a lot of common questions that uh, I'll, I'll answer as we as I get along the way here. So, the 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 project here, as Jason said, is really a um, a contract between the state, the county, and Brightspeed that requires us requires us to put in that fiber backbone by that March 31st deadline. So that fiber backbone is the stuff you see like on Dick Mills and on Stony Point Roads. That's all the fiber backbone, and then there there are access points that we have to reach. Uh, and, and those are the places kind of uh, in the neighborhoods that you'll see, and that's where we have to have the fiber connected to. So that's the real, the, 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 the real deadline for us is making sure that we've got all of that uh, equipment in place before uh, uh, March 31st. So that's all the work that happens up to the point of connecting homes, your homes, to those, to those ac access points. Uh, and we are on track to, uh, to get our construction done in time. You know, I, as you might imagine, we actually build in a little bit of a buffer ourselves. And so I was on a call yesterday where we're going to be adding a couple more construction crews in uh, uh, here, uh, coming up here soon. Uh, but, you know, the team is very confident. We are going to be making the deadline. We know that they're not going to be any extensions. All of that construction work is, is going to be done. Now, at, at the same time, of course, we're not waiting for the construction work to get done to also begin uh, connecting homes. And we've got, in a lot of the project areas, we've done that. And they've, we've got different crews that are doing those functions. So it's not like we're taking people away from construction and making them go over and do uh, handle drops. So that's what, you know, I always try and make people understand that, you know, with a focus, the contractual uh, focus is on making sure we get the construction work all done. We've got the crews there to do it. But at the same time, we know folks want to connect, get connected. So, so as soon as we get an area lit up, uh, we want to go ahead and start uh, making those making those connections for folks, which reminds me, just a, a point I wanted to make, um, Jason had pulled up one of the slides that talked about one of the delays was um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the backhaul fiber, I'll call it, that's uh, uh, on polo grounds. And, and actually, that really isn't delaying us at all. It's, we didn't have to wait on anything there. There's nothing that's holding us, holding us back from doing the other work while that work is going on. So you know, you, you'll see all the crews out there uh, that are on Stony, Stony Point. They're doing all of the stuff they normally do. They just can't light it up and test it until they get that backbone in. But that's not, that's not keeping us from doing anything we need to do or, or making us wait on anything. So I just want to make sure you understood those are kind of happening. Uh, happening uh, simultaneously. Um, so I guess the, the, the point is that if you see in your neighborhood, you're starting to see trucks out there. I know the first reaction because I've got fiber here at my house and I remember seeing those trucks come through and thinking, wow, this is great. It's, you know, it's right around the corner, but there's a pretty good track of what has to happen in between, uh, in between there. So let's see, if you wanna go to the next slide, Jason, cause I think we kind of covered this area. 
yeah. So on this slide, you kind of get an idea. And I'm not going to spend time because uh, a lot of this stuff is, is past. So you see all those, those first couple of dots, easements, materials, inventory, site prep. I mean, maybe there's some of that going on. But we're now kind of at that point, that, that next step there, which is pli uh, placing, splicing, and turning up. So you're going to see those trucks out there. Uh, they're, they're, uh, you know, you'll, you'll see them plowing underneath a, a driveway or, or under a culvert. Um, and uh, um, so that's all that placing, splicing of that fiber has to happen. But then the one I should probably add onto this, uh, onto this slide, is, slide is testing. So you're going to see a period of time where you're going to see all these trucks out there doing stuff. And then all of a sudden, they're going to be gone. And you're going to say, what's going on? I don't get it. You know, there's nobody here. Uh, and what we're doing there is we're testing. So they've got to run signals across to make sure that all the fiber is working. We actually ran into a problem, I think, in, in Rosemont when we were about to launch. Everything looked good, and, uh, um, uh, and uh, it turned out there was a bad piece of fiber in there. So we had to go in, replace that piece of fiber, and then we had to um, splice it, and then we had to test it again to make sure that it was, it was in good shape before we turned up the area. And I guess that kind of, for those of you that have been on these calls before, you know, you probably have, are, are wondering, everybody says, well, when, when's my launch date? We, we used to give launch dates, which when I came on board in October, I thought was the craziest thing I've ever heard of, because there's so many things that happen. You know, you set a date, you all get excited about it, and then something happens, like we have a bad piece of fiber, and all of a sudden we're having to come to you and say, well, it's being pushed off a week. Well, the fiber goes in, we find a piece of problem with that fiber or something, and then we've got to push it back again. So that's why I've said, let's just note for you when things are under construction, when you stop seeing construction going on, that generally means that we're starting to do some testing. And then you can be looking for us to be given, give, we give the announcement as quickly as we can uh, to uh, Jason and Mike to let them know, all right, this area is going to be getting uh, turned up. And that way you'll, you'll know ahead of time and you can be ready um, to start start placing your order. So anyway, that's more of the uh, the time frame that things happen on. And then I've noticed in their property restoration, and 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 this is an issue we've been seeing. So in fact, I think I got one of those emails today from somebody that was that was concerned. I mean, if you see issue with with a property and you don't think it's being restored correctly, our obligation is to put it back the way we we found it. You know, it used to be a scout. We say leave no trace. You know, so we're we're going to try and get in there and make sure that we do everything to put it back the way it was. And if you see an issue with that, you know, contact us, contact uh, Jason and Mike, and, and we'll, um, we will get out there and, and work on those areas. All right, probably move on to the next slide. Okay, so I'm just, I'm not going to go, there's a lot of, lot of busy stuff on here, but this is kind of the process that we are using now. It's kind of what Jason went over as to how things happen with installations. Uh, and uh, I'm going go to go, let's go to the next slide, because I think that's probably a little easier to track as to how things are, are going to happen. So once you, once you, here's kind of the run of how, the, how it works, just so you kind of understand it. So the first thing that we're going to do is once we get everything finished and tested, and we're, we'll go ahead and update our systems, and we'll, we'll in the systems, it will then allow uh, ordering to take place. We then give a notification to the county and you all get the word that we're ready for you to go ahead and take your orders. You, you place your orders for your install and uh, uh, Nancy's gonna cover that. And then as Jason did a great job of explaining, there's really two, kind, two kinds of three things that happen with possibly the third one that he mentioned. The first one is you get, a, you get a temp line. So what happens there is the tech will come out, he'll take a look and he'll see whether we can get to you safely using a temporary line. Now, um, what, what will that, what, what does a temporary line mean? A temporary line means a, a line that is sitting above the ground. It's sitting above the ground. It will have to be buried, all right? So one of the other uh, questions I've gotten recently is, well, are you ever actually gonna bury those? Or are you gonna make us, are you gonna come back and charge us for burying those? No, no. Um, what we do is, we put the temp out there. We will get the crews out that will come back in and do the burying. We do the burying. We don't charge you anything for the burying. You don't actually even need to be there for the burying of that line because nothing gets disconnected and then reconnected. It's just literally taking a, a, a device that we have, we come in, go about six inches under the ground, 
cuts a slice in the ground really, and then puts that cable down in there and closes it back up. And a lot of times, you know, you won't even know that it's, you would not even know that it was there. And that's, that's the, the, the process that happens, happens later on. But that initial process is getting you that, get, getting you that temp line. So when that tech leaves that day, you are completely up and running. The only issue you're gonna have is that temp line. Now, I know there are folks who, so, so there are some folks who do not want a temp line. If you do not want a temp line, nobody is going to force you to get a temp line. All you gotta do is say to the tech, you know what, I'm not comfortable with having a line above the ground. Well, let me go in and do it, you know, what, you know, get me into the process for doing a buried drop. No problem whatsoever. We will absolutely do that if that's what you want to do. Some people may want to do that because maybe you've got a dog and you're worried, or maybe you know where it is, you're worried it could be a trip hazard or whatever. What, whatever your reason, it doesn't matter. If you tell us I don't want a temp, we're not going to force you to, we're not going to force you to do a temp. The flip side is there are cases where I would love for us to be able to do a temp because it gets you uh, up and running faster, but um, we can't do it. We can't do it. And there's all kinds of reasons why that happens. Sometimes it's because you know we, we can't put facilities on both sides of every road to be able to serve each side. So the engineers, when they design the system, they know what works best you know, as a design as to where to put facilities to be able to get to you. So there are some cases where we're gonna have to cross, for instance, a driveway or a road. And in that case, we're not gonna be able to do a temp because we're not gonna put a temp on a, on a road um, that's going to get driven over, and then you're going to wind up out of service. So we, we won't do that. A driveway. A driveway is a little tougher issue. You may want broadband enough that you may say to the tech, look, tech, look at our driveway. You know, we have one car that goes over this one time a day. You know, do you, do you think we could go ahead and do a temp? And the tech will, you know, Depending on the tech, he may say to you, look, I'm uncomfortable doing that because you know the way the size of the stones that you have in your driveway, I've seen this before. That that you don't stand a chance. That thing's gonna last a week and then we're gonna have to do it again. And he we don't want to do that to you, and we don't want to have to have to come out and put another temp line in. So they'll work with you to some degree on you know what your circumstances are and what you're comfortable, what you are comfortable with. And I really say that, what you are comfortable with. And so I always say to folks, if you've got an issue, ask the tech while he's there. You know, why, like for instance, if the tech says, I'm sorry, I can't, can't do a temp for you, ask him, can you explain to me why not? Because I really, really, really want the temp. Otherwise, you're, you're, the tech's going to leave. You're going to contact Jason or Mike and say, oh, I don't understand. And then we've, we send a supervisor back out there to look at it and say, well, here's the reason why. You know? So I'd rather you get that answer from the tech um, right, right then and there. All right. Now, if you're a temp customer, we've got to come back and we've got to bury that line. And this is an area where I'm going to admit to you on public, on you, on YouTube to be here forever. We are behind in getting those lines buried. We know we are behind in getting those lines buried. Um, we are bringing in, I think uh, next week, we have two additional crews that are coming in from out of state to help us with those line burials. Um, you know, I, I'm sure you don't want to, you don't, you don't care or want to hear about the details, but as you can imagine, there are a lot of projects just like this that are going on all across the state right now. And there are very, very limited resources for able to being able to get the work done. Now, again, I'm not talking about the contractual obligation that we have to get the construction done. I'm talking about the drops that, you know, we, we're, we, we do as we can do them. So we are behind. Uh, the, the, you know, Jason and Mike know that. I know that. I was on a call with the senior management yesterday about it. We're, we're coming up with a, some, some solutions that we think can, can help tackle the problem. So if you're somebody who does not want to take the risk of having a line out there for a month, just tell us and we won't put the temp in for you. I mean, that's not, again, that's not, not a problem for us. We are going to be working, you know, we've got crew, these crews coming in that are going to be getting to the old unburied temps first to make sure that those get taken care of. And then we're going to be working real, real hard to do catch up and then put ourselves in a good position so that we can get those done faster. Um, anyway, so that's what I'll say about temp lines. Um, so if you're not a temp line customer, then you are uh, a, a buried install customer. Again, 
it's those same crews that are putting in those temp drops that are doing those installs, okay? So it's the same delay that we're having there. So unfortunately, I wish I could give you better news to say, you know, it's gonna be a week to get those, to, to get you a buried line. It is not gonna be a week. Um, uh, we, again, this is an issue that we're looking at. Uh, 30 to 60 days is probably more of what you're looking at. If you've got, a, if you're in, in a buried situation until we can get caught up on, on the workload there. And again, I, I do apologize for that. I know you're seeing all this work going on and you wish it was, it, it could be done. And if you're somebody that, that unfortunately couldn't get a temp, you know, I, I get the frustration there of, of, of having to, to wait on that. Um, unfortunately, until we can find a way to, you know, get more, and actually these crews that we're bringing in to do this are coming from out of state. We're putting them up, up, up in hotels. We're paying, uh, we're, they're working six days a week. I think we're giving them Sundays off, but you know, they're, 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 uh, and, and we're, we're not done. We're going to try and pull in others as well so that we can get, get caught up on these. All right. So again, that's kind of that process. The one thing I do want to tell you when, when that, when you, if you do a temp install going down to the, the bottom row here, home fiber internet installed and tested, our tech will not leave your home. Well, I guess this isn't technically true. They won't leave your home until that thing is running. Now I have had a few where they've had to come back the next day. So they're not going to sleep on your couch until it's done. But um, when we do those temp lines, you will be fully up and running when that tech leaves and he will have done a test. They do a test from that device to make sure that you're getting the speed that you're supposed to get uh, at, our, at, at our device. Now, I guess that's probably not a bad time just to mention in here because it's, it's a question that will come up because uh, I see it all the time. I'm not getting one gig speed. All right, well, there's, there's two points there. The first point is, if you go back and look, we all, it, it's a bad thing that we do. We talk about it as gig speed. It's gig speed fiber. It's not gig. It is not one, it's not gig. It's 940, 940 meg of speed. So you're never gonna to get to one gig. And I, I and, and I think we try to make sure that none of our marketing stuff says that you're getting one gig. And those speeds are gonna depend on a couple of things. They're gonna depend on, and, and the biggest thing that it depends on is how you are connecting to our network. So if you have your computer plugged directly into our, our device and do your speed check, you're gonna get a very, very different answer than if you're running over your computer or your phone and using your Wi-Fi connection. And so many of the problems that we see on speeds are all, it's, it's Wi-Fi issues that have come up for the most part, you know? And so I think you'll, you, uh, Nancy may cover this, but there, there are some things that we have on our website that can help you if you've got speed issues to go back and see what you can do to, to in, increase or improve your speed. But at the end of the day, as I said, when that tech left, we know that we had the right speeds at your, at your location when we left. The other thing I'll tell you is, and, and again, just being up front, the speed is advertised as up to, you're not gonna get those speeds all the time. There are going to be times when there's network congestion and the speeds are not gonna be up there, but I, I but but I can tell you as a fiber customer myself, the speeds that you're going to see are going to you know far surpass what you've ever seen uh, ever seen before. Uh, and um, but anyway, I also want to make that point. Okay, so the next issue that I've got on this chart, and again, I'm I'm sorry I'm moving so quickly, but I had a lot of material I wanted to cover for y'all. Um, the next uh, issue on here was the locates issue. So this is a, a a real common one that we that we hear about. So. Whenever we're doing work in a right of way, we have to call in, they call it a ticket, and it's with Virginia 811, what everybody used to call misutility. When that ticket gets called in, anyone, uh, uh, the, the misutility center knows who's in the ground there because they've got the maps. They contact those people and they tell them, you need to come out and mark your facilities. So in general, there's, and, and we give them three days to do that. So if you see paint on the ground, what that means is somebody has been told that there's facilities in the ground and the people that are the owners of those facilities have to come out and locate their facilities so that when we come in, we don't cut them by accident. All right, so that's, that's the locating process. So a lot of times when people say, well, what's going on? If you see paint on the ground, it means we're waiting, we're waiting for them to come through and give us the all clear to be able to, uh, to do our digging. And that's all done electronically. You won't see anything on the ground that tells you that it's all done electronically with messages. 
But here's the piece that I, that I want you to be aware of. A lot of you have private utilities that are on your uh, on your yards, right? May, maybe a water line, could be a security, you know, a, a, a dog security fence, whatever. We do not locate those. The VA 811 doesn't send out a message for anybody to come and locate those. Those are things that you are going to need to have um, located yourself to have done. I do know that a lot of communities have been really, really good about kind of partnering together. And, and I think Jason and Mike can help, you know, if you have a community leader that's kind of working with you all to get you a contact so that you can do it, have somebody come out and do all of you at one time and, and share some of the costs and make it a whole lot easier. And, and I'm sure Jason will share that information uh, down the road here. But again, absolutely, so, so, Rich. And, and let me yeah. let me hop in one second. We do have a question related, um, and that's during the construction phase. Um, if you have private utilities um, that are underground, um, that are in the area of the road, um, so for instance, an electric fence or something that's actually near the road where they're going to be doing the work, or and this is really important, um, if it crosses the road, what if if anybody has a has a utility that crosses the road, um, then reach out to us, BAAO at albemarle.org. Uh, Ms. Clements, I saw that, and that's exactly the right thing to do, to let uh, the work crew know to, to not continue um, until those can be marked. Now, I will say that was one of the delays that I should have included um, earlier that, that, that this project has faced, where you have to put a pause on that operation until those can be marked. And so thank you for reaching out about this. Um, email or have, have your neighbor email us um, and what we will do and, and share the words, you know, spread the word in your neighborhood with anybody. If you've got a HOA list, a HOA, if you've got a list serve, uh, spread the word about, uh, about this issue. And that's that if you have, uh, any private utilities that are near the road, um, or, and especially if they're crossing the road, um, have them reach out to us. Um, the road work is buried deeper than the work that is, uh, going to happen on your property. Um, and that means that, if you have that sort of uh, uh, private utility depth about 12 to 18 inches, um, it, it'll go through it, it'll go past it. Um, and so if you have any issues with uh, private utilities during the construction phase that are near the road, across the road, reach out to us. We will work with, uh, with Rich and the team uh, that's actually on the ground doing this work to make sure that they don't uh, 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 continue work that might uh, damage somebody's access to water, electricity or other. Um, but the other thing is, um, we will connect you with a list of private locate providers um, that will help you get those marked. And again, if you guys can do it as a community, that is always preferred um, versus just doing a bunch of one-offs. Um, and the reason for that really quickly is that when you have uh, a one-off, when you have uh, just, you know, Sally is, is asking for somebody to mark her private utilities, um, there's a minimum cost per hour and a minimum number of hours. And so it might only take them 10 minutes, but they're still gonna charge you for two hours. Um, if you have a, a broad contract where you guys can actually have a single contract, a single account for the entire community, then everybody can be charged the amount of time that it took to mark their area. So um, work together to try to, to, to come up with a plan, email me, I will give you guys the contacts for the uh, locate companies and we can make that happen. Uh, but like I said, Ms. Clements, have your neighbor reach out to us and we will work with them to, to affect a good solution on this one. Yep. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, in most cases, so that, that on the construction side, and not talking about the installation side, on the construction side, we're operating in either VDOT easements or we're operating in some place where, you know, generally you're not going to find other people because you you probably could not have gotten yourself an easement in there. Now, there are going to be exceptions, like it sounds like what we're talking about here with this road crossing. So, yeah, it's good to be alerted to those because we're looking for, you know, in those, in those, um, uh, along those main roads, we are looking at the things that VA 811 can can identify. So if you see paint on the ground and you know that you've got something in there, great to great to let us know right away because that means something's uh, about to happen. On the on the drops in the yards, I know this is the other thing that comes up is you know we're, as we're approaching, you're going to get some snow there. Um, you know, good locators locators are not supposed to put paint on the ground. When they know it's about to snow, so they should be putting, a, you know, a marker, a little flags, doing something to help, because you know you don't want us cutting your line. We don't want to be cutting your line. We don't have to be. We don't want to be in the business of trying to repair your line. So let's avoid that at all costs by making sure we have things. Um, we have things marked ahead of time. 
And then the last uh, point on this slide is um, property restoration. I mean, I don't think we see a lot of these, but when we see them, I get that folks are, are, are disturbed by it and they call and they're angry about it. Um, if, if, if you don't think your property has been restored to where it, where it was beforehand, you just need to let us know. We are operating with subcontractor crews. I'll, I'll admit that. But we are we work really, really hard with them. And I think once you if you talk with the contract crews, you talk with the technicians, you'll see that the folks that are out there in the field really do want to do what's right for you and they'll help to get things restored. So if you see something that's not right, just tell them that. Uh, tell them that right then and there. And if they don't, we'll come back and we'll fix it. We've had a few instances, it's just been, I think, a handful of them where we've had to use a a damage claims process, but for the most part, if we can do it ourselves, we're going to get that. We're going to, you know, we'll make sure that things are restored the way they ought to be. All right, Jason, I think that's kind of my yeah presentation. And uh, now we'll bring on Nancy Devonay to talk about um, the uh, the actual process for putting an order. And this is obviously very important if you're new to the call. Pay attention to this section. This is how uh, once we email you to let you know it's time you can place your order. Nancy? Hi. Okay. Um, I am going to just talk a little bit about uh, what fiber is and why fiber internet is, is important and why it's better. Um, you're probably wondering, you know, why are we talking about fiber so much? Fiber optic internet it uses light pulsing through that special glass cable to move information at nearly the speed of light. So it's an ultra fast broadband connection with enough speed to handle all your devices simultaneously or power your small business software. So if you think about it, most households today have a lot of connected devices. Not only are your phones connected, but your tablets, your gaming devices, TVs, even your refrigerator can be connected to the internet. So Brightspeed Fiber allows you to connect all of these devices and play games, stream shows, chat online with no data caps, contracts, or bundles. Fiber is a reliable, scalable internet connection. And we offer a fully digital online experience. So when you order fiber, Brightspeed Fiber, excuse me, you'll place your order online. You don't need to call an 800 number. Um, you can simply go to q.brightspeed.com, which is at the very top of the, of the page there. We're installing fiber optic cables to the homes in the Grand Area now. And as you know, we rolled out in a phased um, approach. So not all households have gotten turned up at the same time, but you will be notified as Rich explained earlier through um, notification when it's time to place your order. So Brightspeed Fiber is a prepay platform. So you'll need an email address and a credit card to place your order. So if you go to brightspeed.com, you're gonna wanna make sure you're, you're actually following that um, note at the top that says CenturyLink or Quantum Fiber customers, because you're gonna go to www.q.brightspeed.com. And on the next page, this is where you actually enter your address. So you'll enter your address. Um, and then at the very bottom, you'll notice it says, um, if you're an existing customer, um, select this button. So if you um, select that, so you're an existing customer today, whether you just have voice or you have voice and internet um, or DSL, you're gonna go ahead and uh, select that. So at that point, because you're an existing customer with us today and you have some one of our services, um, you can go ahead and finish this online and someone will contact you to arrange the removal of your DSL. So if you have copper DSL today um, and you're gonna change to fiber internet, we will contact you to make sure that we remove the DSL um, and time it uh, kind of with the installation of the fiber. So on the next slide, if you're going to, if you're new or you're continuing online, at the next slide, after you've selected check availability, it should come up with the, you can go one slide forward. This is the two options for speed. So we do, we talked about 940 meg, um, but we also have 200 meg. So those are your two speed options. You'll highlight the one that you want and then um, click select continue, go to the next page. Here, excuse me, here's where you select the modem 
at this time, there's no charge for a modem. So just select um, the one that has the zero dollars on it. If you wanna bring your own modem or if you wanna explore other options, you can click on the other side, but um, we are, char are not charging for the modem. So go ahead and select that and then click on continue from that page. You'll go to the next slide, which is your installation date um, and time. So you'll enter um, your email address, and your phone number here, but it should give you then, when you click on this information, it'll give you a, um, a new due date. So it'll come back and give you the soonest available due date. So you can move that date into the farther into the future, but you can't bring it any closer because that means everything up until whatever date it comes back with is full. So um, if that date doesn't work, you can select, you can hit that count or the calendar right there, and you can get a date that's further in the future that will work for you. So after you've done that, again, you select continue and go forward. Here's the first opportunity to review your order. So this is just give, telling you, here's the um, service you selected. Here's the monthly rate. The, um, oops, hold on, I'm trying to, I'm trying to read it myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've got it too small. Um, whoops. So at this point, the best thing to do is um, take that that um, due date, and if you're okay with it, you're going to have to look at and and accept some of these other um, terms and conditions. So review your order, and then you can also look check on those radio buttons at the bottom. And I, I also want to to let you know that. At any time when you're in the order flow, in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you'll see a little note that says uh, Bright Speed Support. If you get confused or concerned that you're not doing something wrong, you can click to chat um, with our agents if you have questions right there. So after you've selected everything here, you've reviewed your order, you're going to go forward one more page. Um, the next page is going to um, give you again, kind of to the left side there, um, a recap of your order, what your monthly amount is, you know, everything that you've, you've input so far. And then you're going to put your name and information here. Um, if you're a business listing, this is, if you're a business, this is where you'll identify how you kind of want to have the name on the account. And then again, you'll hit, <clears throat> you'll go forward. The next page is where you actually enter your, um, it contact, excuse me, your credit card information. So again, enter your uh, payment information and click submit. After that, you'll get um, a confirmation. The website will give you a confirmation page and you will get a, uh, a confirmation email. So if you, if you don't get that, um, then I would suggest that you give us a call because there could be something wrong. And I just wanna make sure that you have it. <clears throat> okay. Great, thank you, Nancy. Um, and so with that, we are gonna move into our Q and A. We've got a bunch of questions um, that uh, we're gonna to try to bundle together a little bit. And I'm actually gonna back up. We, we gave, uh, Hey, Mr. Wolski, one answer regarding um, the what is the minimum speed? And I know that's actually been a question that's been asked before. And so I'm going to I'm going to run through a couple of things real quick. One, as as uh, Rich mentioned, uh, there are a lot of factors that go into what the speeds uh, uh, that you're going to get on your device are. So the endpoint speeds. Um, one of the things that we can just establish is uh, before they leave. Um, they're going to do a couple of things. One, they're going to do a test on the device that is being installed. Uh, so this is the device that is 100% fiber coming into your house. And they're actually going to, it's called the ONT, and they're going to do a test on that. Uh, because once they've got power to that, once they've got the fiber strand connected to that, that device is kind of the end point. It's the, the demarcation point of the network that is being provided to you. Um, and, and they will make sure that's 940 megabits per second um, because it needs to be um, that speed by definition. So, so if, if it's less than that, if they're not getting the speeds that across that distance uh, to the ONT, uh, then there's a problem that needs to be addressed. After that, in the section that is now the network inside your home, um, 
your account, uh, I'm going to jump ahead of you here on Rich, uh, on this, Rich, but your, 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 your contract with Brightspeed does not provide a minimum speed that you will receive inside the network that is provided, that, that is inside your house. And the reason for that is, the, is part of what, what Rich mentioned is that there's a lot of factors that go in to the speed once it's past that demarcation point. Um, your equipment, your distance from device, the quality of the equipment, the quality of the of the the little the little copper cables connecting your devices, all of those things play a role. So there aren't going to there is no minimum speed that is acceptable. Instead, um, what you're looking for, and we covered this last month. Um, I didn't I didn't include those slides this time because I wanted to make sure we had time to cover the other things. Um, but what you're looking for is the gigabit experience. And I wish I'd brought it, but there's a great study out there that talks about how it's a marketing study. It talks about how um, providers like Brightspeed should stop talking about the speeds. Um, and instead, they should talk about packet loss. Um, and the way to think of it is your internet doesn't come like a hose, like the pipe. Instead, what's actually happening is that it's coming with buckets. And every time you get uh, some data, it comes as a bucket full of water, full of data, um, and they're delivered one bucket at a time. Um, and the reason for that is that when it's traveling, it's your data. It's not your neighbor's data. It's not your. It's it's not your your the the guy down the street's data. It's your data, and so it's in your own bucket. And so when it's traveling on the external network, it's going to go past a lot of other places, but it's just yours. And so it needs to get to you and it needs to get to you on time. And when it's late or when it gets lost or when some of that data ends up getting spilled out, that's called packet loss. So it's the number, it's it, it's measured um, as the number of times in a, in a fixed amount of time that your packets get lost on the way. The DSL service that you have today um, the reason that even if you have one of the better plans, even if you've got 40 megabits per second coming uh, your way, the reason that your video is still choppy isn't because uh, of the speed. It's actually because of the packet loss. It's because um, with a lot more um, um, with a lot more technology shifts, um, you end up with a lot more uh, uh, packet loss in fiber. Um, you're staying in the same technology for almost the entirety of the trip. And there's a lot less packet loss, and so your experience is better. So, um, so speeds are not going to be, you know, if if you if you're sitting there and you're just uh, obsessively hitting that speed test button, and you keep getting numbers that you don't like, um, that's just going to keep happening uh, because there are, there are other factors. What you want to be looking for is the gigabit experience, and that means that you sit down to watch a movie. And you can watch it in 4K HDR end to end, and it never breaks down for you. And you never find yourself wondering why, you know, why why you can't watch this movie without it pausing for 20 seconds in the middle. Um, it is the difference between getting on a video call and having everybody see you clearly, and uh, getting on the video call and just going ahead and turning off your video and your audio because nobody can hear you and nobody can see you. Um, so, um, so think about those sorts of things when you're thinking about the, the, the experience that you're going to have with your service, worry less about a, a specific hard number and focus more on just the experience, experiential differences. Um, the other thing is the, the, we've got a question here about what is removed DSL um, and, and then how do we cancel existing CenturyLink bundle? Um, and then we, Rich is in the middle of answering Ms. Davis's question about um, this other one. Um, when you have um, almost all of you, uh, I believe, are, uh, are, are on uh, ha have a POTS line, have a copper line come into your house and you might have copper service. Um, either DSL or phone or both, and you might not. When you do, um, you are a, already a Brightspeed customer. Um, Brightspeed um, has uh, has made it uh, 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 has made a business decision that they're not going to maintain two networks at the same time. Um, that is something that is. Uh, it is, is from a business perspective is is sensible. Um, copper networks are really expensive to maintain. Uh, fiber networks are really expensive to build. Um, so that is a decision that they have made. Uh, we will go ahead and state the county uh, through our office has uh, has expressed a desire that anybody that wants to maintain a a, a copper telephone line um, should be able to do so as long as they can. However, that is actually outside of our uh, ability to regulate. So. Um, when you order service, 
um, the expectation is that your uh, copper lines will be deprecated. Now, it might not happen right away. Um, it, it really, it shouldn't just happen right away because um, they're going to, you know, they're going to get you connected and, and, and then you're going to get phone service. And that's when, uh, the, you know, there's going to be plans made to, to deprecate that service. But that is something that will, will eventually happen. And so um, removing DSL um, is exactly that. It's deprecating the copper service, the copper uh, uh, network that is currently connected to your house um, because you have a working fiber replacement. There are some people that have specific instances where they have an issue. They have a, a challenge that they need to figure uh, out a solution. If you have a security system, if you have a dependence on uh, a medical device or a fax machine that requires your copper line, um, absolutely reach out to us. Um, when you're placing your, your order, um, we will bring that up with Brightspeed. Um, where possible, reach out to the provider for that service and see what they can do. Um, it might be a security system that needs a software update. It might be an entirely different device that needs to come into play um, or a separate solution. For those of you that are using fax machines, um, there might be separate fax solutions that you can use over an IP device. Um, either way, um, if there's a specific concern that you have reg regarding maintaining your copper line, reach out to us. We're happy to hear from you and to work with Brightspeed to reach a good resolution. Um, Jason, another, yep. While, while you're on that one, um, two thoughts. I mean, I think fiber services have been out for probably 10 years, and I've never heard of one so far where there was something that could not be transitioned over. I know maybe somebody knows of one, uh, but I haven't heard of one. So I think that, that you know, the, the point there is just do that work ahead of time to be sure that you know that when the switch happens that you've got whatever you need in, in, in place. The other point that I would make is, you know, please, when you do that order, it asks you to click on there, what your current number is, and get it switched. If you don't click that, what's going to happen is you're going to get a notice that the, the DSL and the pots are going to be cut off, and it could cause problems in the transition over to the connected voice. I'm dealing with one of those for the last couple of weeks. I'm going to be calling the customer again today to talk to her about it, and she unintentionally just didn't mark that out. And now we're just having a nightmare trying to get her uh, get her in place again. And it just would have been so easy. You know, I know the screens can be difficult sometimes to navigate and a little bit confusing. I'm hoping that once we get completely over to bright speed and we're not really doing anything that's with that's lumen related anymore, we're making improvements in our own in our own networks to be able to make things easier, uh, easier for you to operate. So. Absolutely. Um, and then we're going to move to, to this last question that we've got. Does installation to my home include updating of the current DSL wiring? So um, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, there's a demarcation point. There's a point where um, the bright speed component ends. Um, now, if you accept their, uh, their router, um, then from that ONT, uh, so it's a tiny little box that has a fiber uh, element coming into it, it's connected to power, and then it has an ethernet port. Um, from that little box, um, if you accept the, the CenturyLink uh, router, then there will be a, another wire, a little copper wire, connected from that ONT to that router that is provided by CenturyLink. Um, that is uh, the extent of the work. Now, if you have Ethernet structured wiring throughout your house, um, then Brightspeed will work with you. I'm sorry, I said CenturyLink a couple of times. I should have said Brightspeed. Um, if you have structured wiring, so you have Ethernet wiring throughout your house, um, then Brightspeed will work with you to make sure that that wiring can be utilized um, to, to provide service. Um, if you don't have structured wiring and you actually just have telephone lines um, and your modem for your DSL is connected to one of those telephone lines somewhere else in your house other than where um, the phone line actually comes into the house, then that, that wiring uh, cannot be used for ethernet. So it can't be used to connect the ONT to the router and it can't be used, um, it can't be upgraded in place. Um, that is, uh, you know, kind of wall tearing work that would require a lot of, a, a lot of, of, of upgrade and for which you'll need to hire a structured wiring contractor or an electrician to do that work. Um, so that falls out of scope. Now, um, the Brightspeed techs are really great guys. Um, I will say this, you know, we've never said anything ill about the, the local techs because they're out there trying to get the work done. Um, they are prepared to help uh, solve your problem. And so uh, they got a truck full of stuff. And if they can work with you um, within scope to 
to make sure that the solution that's laid out for you is, is going to work for you, then they're going to do it. Um, you'll find that out during your installation appointment. Um, and I did want to back up to Mr. Hogan's point about um, the outside work, inside work, um, and when that should happen. Um, to, to summarize the way that the process should work um, that Rich explained earlier, um, for those instances where you're not going to be able to get, you're not getting a temporary line, either because you can't or because you choose not to, um, they're going to maybe, while they're there, put together, uh, uh, put, put something inside your house. They might even have a, a hole that they drill on the outside of your house, and they might even put a little box up covering that hole on the outside of your house. They might do those things. That's not required. Um, because if you're gonna, if you're not going to get a temporary line, then you're going to need to have that fiber drop before service is installed inside your home. So um, if you have one of those outside boxes, if you have some equipment that's already been wired up inside your house, um, that's fine. You're still going to need after the drop happens. So after a crew comes out and buries a line through your yard, and just you know, it's the same line that was that the same temporary line. It's that same uh, 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 ruggedized cabling that's going to get buried in your yard. Um, there's still going to be a separate appointment where somebody's going to come and they're going to get you connected. That process, um, it should be automated. Um, so if you don't have a temporary line, um, somebody's going to reach out to you and let you know when your fiber drop is going to come. That's going to get scheduled. And then somebody's going to come and, uh, at, a, at a subsequent date that they're going to let you know and they're going to let you uh, have an opportunity to actually place an installation order again, where you can schedule your time um, and they're going to do the inside work to get you connected. So even if you have equipment on the outside and inside of your house, somebody still needs to come and get it connected. Now, if you have a temporary line, that latter part all goes away because you've already got the inside stuff taken care of. And all that's going to happen is somebody's going to come with a, a, a really cool looking machine and they're going to basically just uh, put little slits in your yard that, that close themselves and they're just going to shove that that line into the ground. So that way, by the time they're done, you don't even notice that they were there and they never have to disconnect your service. So um, um, so the, the line that uh, Mr. Evans' question is about uh, what type of line, the line that is the temporary line, it's, it's designed to be buried. Um, it is designed to actually just be shoved into the ground. And so if you get a temporary line that gets buried, it's the same line. Uh, if you get a, a, a fiber drop, it's still the same line. Um, the technique might be different just in, in terms of the circumstance. If they need to bore under the road, there might be different equipment involved, but the line itself is the same kind of sheathed and, and uh, 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 protected uh, fiber line that's going to serve your house. So, um, Jason, Jason yep. let me add on that because I think Mr. Evans is saying something yeah. a little different mm -hmm. too. He says the root of his temp line will not be the same as the root of the permanent line. So, if if you run into a situation mm -hmm. like that, you what you need to do is when they come out to put that temp in, you need to alert that that tech there. If you need something a little, and they'll work with you. If you need something that's a little different uh, and, and you, you know, as the way your permanent line needs to go, they can do some marking on it for you. They can maybe, I mean, I've had cases where we've gone ahead and left some extra cable attached or a, a, a couple of extra, uh, um, I mean, it's all connected, right? So there's not like extra wire hanging off of there, but they'll have, have some extra loops in that uh, drop so that they can do that little bit of different routing. Now, yep. if you if you got a temp line and they show up to the permanent, and you say, well, I want to go a different way. And now you're talking a different situation. I haven't crossed one of those uh, to see what what the, the solution is there. But I mean, then then you'd have to disconnect. You'd have to, we, we don't just splice another piece of fiber and connect it on the end. That would be a whole new drop that would be we would be putting in and really don't want to be doing that. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like that there might be some, some you, Mr. Evans, you might be uh, one of the miscellaneous. Um, and if so, if you're concerned about it, obviously feel free to email us and let us know and we will go ahead and get um, uh, 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 and, and make sure that Brightspeed's on top of it. Um, Mr. Ayers, last question. Here it is. Um, I'm 30 minutes late. Did we get an update on time frame for Murray Lane? Um, it's not not sure. 
Um, it's that the 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 uh, limited access on Broadax Road, especially, and some of the other uh, limited access roads, means that it they couldn't get uh, heavy equipment in and have been doing this by hand. And so uh, progress continues, um, and we will let you guys know the moment that you can place orders. And with that, uh, we're going to put a hard stop. Um, got some additional things to take care of, but thank you, Rich. Thank you, Nancy. Yep. And thank you to everybody. Oh, my, Rich, did you want to add one more thing? Yeah, yeah. I just want to note something. And uh, uh, we made a change uh, starting with this year on uh, how you, when you call in. So, and I just want you to know this, just the things, the things that we're trying to do now is bright speed to try to improve things. So, it used to be, and uh, Mr. Hogan, if you're still on, I'm going to apologize to you publicly. I'm not going to mention what you went through to try and get to your issue resolved recently, but but I know that when you were calling, it could be kind of a nightmare to get to the right place, and that was part of the problem we were having in the transition from CenturyLink over to Brightspeed. So uh, as of the first of the year, now when you call in, if you call in with, with a number that's associated with your account, it will automatically recognize that you're a fiber customer and it will get you to the right, we call it fiber success team to, to handle your issue there. Uh, so if you call in from, you know, if you've used a prior phone number, now you're using your wife's cell phone number, it's not gonna do that. And then you're gonna have to put in some account numbers to be able to get you there. But that should help out with getting people directed to where they need to be. And again, that, that number is that 833-692-7773 number that we've been using. And, and it should get you right to fiber success. And those are the folks that are dedicated to working on, on the fiber issues for us. Perfect. Um, Thanks, Jason. Well, we will we will send that. Uh, if you missed it when he said it, we will send that that phone number again. So that way everybody's got it. We'll send it uh, through our email list. Um, and and like Rich said, um, if you're calling from the one that's registered, you will get to the Fiber Success team. So uh, with that, thank you all so much for joining us, uh, and we will see you all in February. Thank you. Thanks, thank everybody. You.